Now, 25 years since their debut album, The Good Will Out, was released, Danny McNamara from Embrace is with me. Danny, do you remember the build-up to the album coming out? Wow, yeah, 25 years ago, yeah. There was a lot of press, and uh, I, was, I was really nervous that it wouldn't do as well as we'd sort of hyped it up to do, because uh, we, we'd, we'd uh, you know, been on all the front covers and been on all the radio shows and told everybody it was going to be amazing. And, um, basically, we had to go to number one, otherwise it was a failure. So, um, but it did, went to number one. Um, and it was a pretty amazing time, yeah. What made you think it was going to be amazing? Um, I think it, it was sort of more sort of wish fulfillment. It was like sort of uh, our, our willpower, sort of willing it into happening. It was like we hadn't written it when we started saying that. We were just like, we want it to be, and so if we tell everyone it's gonna be, um, then it has to be. And so it was like, it just sort of made it like a sort of a collective prayer, almost like everybody willing us to fail, which we sort of set ourselves up for by bragging about it so much, really worked as like sort of wind in our sails to make us really dig deep and, and, and produce the album, you know? It did go to number one, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. How did that feel? Um, yeah, amazing. I mean, it was it was uh, it was more special when Out of Nothing went to number one because we'd been dropped by the record company and then got re-signed and all that. But when um, when Goodwill Out went to number one, it was like it had to. So uh, it was more relief than anything. I think like there was so much like the record company spent so much money on us at that point. Um, we, when we left Virgin, we were in debt to like, I don't know, God, like two million quid or something like that. Really? Yeah, um, still in debt to them now. <laughs> but fortunately, they can't stand the bailiffs around anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, spent a lot of money uh, in very expensive studios all over the world making that album happen. And then we did like 99% of it in a local studio in Huddersfield in the end. But we worked with everyone from like Andy Wallace, Johnny Dollar, Steve Osborne, you know, loads of different really expensive people, Chris Potter, uh, and then ended up doing it all with a local guy called David Crefield, so. How was the tour that followed? Um, what was really great about those early tours is it was the first time that everyone started singing along. And when, when people are singing along to your song, it's the most magical feeling in the world. It's like, you just get into this like, it's almost like a sham, shamanic place where they give to you and then that makes you play better, which makes them cheer louder, which makes you play better again. And it just spirals up and up and up and up. And especially in those early days, it was like the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that. So we were like, we were really flying in the early days, I think. Yeah. That debut album had five top 40 singles on it. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> I remember our manager said um, we were getting so much radio play, he was worried that people were going to be fed up of us. <laughs> so he even said to our plugger, can we, like, can we have a word with the radio stations and say, can you play us a bit less? Because people might not want to buy the album if they've heard it so much already. <laughs> Which is, you know, I mean, it sounds really silly now, but um, yeah, it was incredible. Like the, the amount of sort of support that we had, it was just amazing. What kind of pressure were you under to deliver with album number two, which was drawn from memory that came out in 2000? Um, that's a weird one because I felt all the pressure with the first album. Then after the first album was successful, I felt a lot less pressure with the second one. So I didn't have that um, feeling that a lot of people get that second album syndrome. And so we just really enjoyed making the second one. It was much more loose, much more sort of all the band, it was much more democratic. All the band was sort of chipping in and it was much more about the music and the feel and stuff. Um, and it didn't do half as well. So, you know, um, I think, I think we, when our backs are against the wall, we produce our best work, so. Coldplay supported you on the tour for that album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they played with us at uh, Blackpool uh, Tower Ballroom, they supported us, yeah. And you became mates with them? Yeah, my dad went and got Chris, because um, I thought they were really good, I loved them, and my dad did as well, and he just went down to their dressing room and grabbed all the Chris and said, come and meet my son, they, they thought you were really good. Uh, and he came upstairs, and I was just like, 
it, this was before Yellow and before I think before the album was out even you know they, they you know they were just starting to get a bit of radio play and stuff um, and yeah we just hit it off straight away um, he's really like he's a really charismatic guy and he's just a lot of fun to be around he thinks really quickly and um, I just find him really entertaining to be around. And yeah, I remember we swapped all our different phone numbers that we had. So it was like, this is my mom's, this is my dad's, this is my girlfriend's, this is my home phone number, this is my mobile, this is my manager, this is my tour manager. So we could get hold of each other whenever. And, and yeah, we've kept in touch since. It's still, uh, like I sent him pictures of my, of my um, new baby daughter and um, him and his son, uh, Moses, uh, sang me a song a couple of weeks ago and sent it me as like a voicemail thing. They did um, uh, Sultan's a Swing, Dire Straits. And they both hung it and sort of and put Danny McNamara in there instead of like the guy in there. It was like pretty amazing. How brilliant is that? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I thought you might have guested with them on the last tour. Um, well, they had to support them um, at the uh, Cardiff Millennium Stadium. Uh, so that was like payback enough, you know, like we had them supporting us at Blackpool Tower Ballroom, which is like, I don't know, 3,000 or whatever. And then they had us on for both nights at Cardiff Millennium Stadium, which is like, I don't know, 70,000, 80,000. So I figured that was payback enough, you know. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant to hear that you're still mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, 25 years down yeah, the line? Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah, it um, is, yeah. Seven albums, still selling out shows. Yeah. The buzz is still there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, our last album went top ten, and, um, yeah, this is sold out tonight. All the gigs generally that we do are, are sold out. Um, and, yeah, we're still still really good mates, with the, me and the band, and we still still feel hungry, you know, still feel like maybe even our best work's in front of us, you know. Um, we're, we're playing a couple of new songs tonight, um, and... The energy goes up, I think. We, we just did them this week, and uh, yeah, we're still, we're still doing it, still feeling it. Um, what's amazing about an Embrace gig is that the crowd do a lot of the work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is very communal, I will say that. Um, often the band can have an off night, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't you know, get The noticed. crowd are just so up for it, you know, and that, and, and, and that takes... Any, you know, any hangover or any, you know, any niggles or whatever you might have had about your day is just immediately wiped out as soon as you finish the first song, really. Is it good to be back here at the Peace Hall? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. It's like, it's such a good venue. Like, they used to, back in, back in the day, like, you know, when I, was, when I was a teenager, they used to have, like, little local band nights here, you know, where you'd have, like, 100 people in a little bandstand that used to be here. Um, but now they're putting on proper events here. Um, and we did one of the first a few years ago. Um, it's just an amazing venue. It's great to be back. We, we were worried that we wouldn't be able to sell it out, but it's sold out in a couple of weeks, which yes. is just, yeah, that's great. What makes it so incredible to play? Um, the way that it's a natural amphitheatre, it's, it's just, um, it, it's, it's like wherever you are, you can see everyone. And it also sort of captures all the sound. So quite often when you're at a festival, like the sound coming out will just go into the air and it'll get blown around. And even when it's windy here, it's still like really, really powerful and it's really self-contained. So it's, it's just a great venue. I think the best, the best round here, definitely. Yeah. I think it's actually one of the best unique venues in the country. Yeah, yeah. I would say like, Nottingham, Rock City, Glasgow, Barrowlands, and then this, I think, in the country, yeah. And a massive homecoming show. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly, yeah. They, what's great about this one is, like, my mum and dad and, uh, well, my daughter's came to sound check. They're still a little bit too young to come at the gig because they're only, like, one and four. Um, but my wife's come in tonight for the first time. We've got a babysitter, which I, I don't know if you've got kids who are very young, but that's, like... Getting out at all is, is it? She didn't come to the last one because my first daughter was only three weeks old, so she couldn't. So, yeah, she's going to be at a night as well, so it should be great. Are you going to love it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great show. Cheers, David. All Thank right. Thank you so much, mate. No worries.